Good morning. This morning's verse is from the book of Matthew. It is Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, I want to go back and I want to look at a little bit more of this. We're going to look at a large part of the book of, of Matthew chapter 5. Um, and so what we're looking at is Matthew 5 begins, in obviously, in verse 1. It's referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. And what we see is Jesus is walking along and, and people begin to gather around him. Um, and so he decides to sit down and teach him. So we're going to look at a section called the Beatitudes. Uh, but it starts off like this. Matthew 5, 1 says, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger for thirst and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others, per when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So this is a lesson, and what, what, Jesus is, what Jesus is doing here is largely contrasting how we are measured in heaven versus how we, how we are measured on earth. Now, we're not supposed to measure ourselves or others on earth the way we do, but, we're con but he's contrasting the difference between the kingdom of heaven and earth where we presently are. I heard a fantastic testimony yesterday, an amazing man who was persecuted. And the position that he was in um, and the accusations brought against him were so wrong and so literally unfathomable by people around him. And yet the turmoil that it took on him and his family is, is, is unbelievable. But he stuck to who he knew he was. He stuck to God. He stuck to Jesus and followed and fell on his knees as Job. And with some of his friends gathered around him, he found his way through and all has been restored. Now, there's still circumstances and, and situations that, that are in his life and in the lives of those around him because of those accusations. But none of them were true. And it's beautiful when God restores and leads people through a season so that they can appreciate and love him and recognize who he is and the power he is. But let's go back and look for a minute at Matthew 5.5. 5. I looked at a couple different translations of this. So first one is the one we're looking at. It's the ESV. That's our normal one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Another translation says, God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. Another says, happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. So as a simple mind looks through these verses and the different versions of it, we can pick out some key words. One is meek. Uh, another one is humble. And then we get to the point where it says that they shall inherit the earth or the whole earth. The third version says they will receive what God has promised. So what I pull out of this is blessed are the meek and humble, for they shall inherit what God has promised. And if we string these together, and then I was talking with my daughter on the way into school this morning, I asked her, what do you think... What do you think that means? What do you think meek means? And she said weak. And interestingly, then we looked it up. And meek, an adjective, is defined as quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on. So then we looked up imposed just to make sure we had that one under control. It says force, something unwelcome or unfamiliar to be, to be accepted or put in place. So again, if we go back and we look at these and we see blessed are the meek, blessed are those who are easily imposed upon, for they shall inherit the earth. Well, that, that, sounds, that, that, sounds, that sounds bad, right? And blessed are the meek. If Jesus was the example of who we are supposed to be and who we are supposed to emulate, was Jesus weak? No. Jesus was strength under control. 
But what this verse is referring to, it says, blessed are the meek. And if we go back to the humble, humble are people who do something and don't necessarily need to take credit for it. So blessed are those that are doing something that are not taking credit for it. Blessed are doing those who are doing something imposed upon them and not taking credit for it. Well, this is Jesus talking. Blessed are the weak. He's saying, blessed are those, or I feel, that he's saying, blessed are those who accept the responsibility willingly, without fighting, that God has given to us, that Jesus brought to us. And they do that, and they follow, and they strive to do the assignment that was given to them, and they will inherit what God has promised. Well, let's stop and look at this. What is the first commandment, right? Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And how do we do that? We do that by fulfilling the rest of the commandments, which are loving your neighbor as yourself. And part of loving the neighbor is showing, is sharing the good news. And Jesus said, go and make disciples. So what do we do with that? If that's the assignment, are we meek? Are we taking that responsibility and without grumbling, going and doing what God has asked of us and not taking credit for the good, the good things that we do, it's not really us doing them, but we are doing what God told us to do. And when that praise comes around, are we taking that praise or are we pointing that praise and that glory back to God? Because blessed are those who are doing what they are called to do and, and creating God's glory in their, in their efforts and in their actions and then pointing all of that glory back at him and telling people, as I mentioned yesterday, the glow or the other day, the glow and aura that people who know Jesus and know God have with them. Are they pointing that glow back at God and Jesus? Are, are we explaining to people that, hey, what you're seeing is me. What you're seeing is, is so much bigger and better than me. Are we doing that? Are we doing those things that we are called to do humbly? Are we accepting that responsibility meekly? Because if we do, then we will inherit the earth. We will inherit what God has promised to us. So again, Matthew 5, 5, just one of the verses listed in the Beatitudes, which again is the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Father God, thank you for all that you have given to us. Thank you for this lesson in reminding us that, that we have a job to do, that you gave us an assignment, Lord, and that it is our that it is our literal duty because the price, Jesus, that you paid to give us an eternity with, with, with God, with you, with Jesus, with, with the Holy Spirit, to have that eternity forever, you gave us an assignment. Go forth and make disciples. Go and share the good news. Father God, thank you for that assignment. Thank you for giving us the opportunity, inviting us to do something that you did not need us to be part of, but you invited us to be part of. So thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to walk with you in that such that we can show you our love by obeying, by meekly doing the assignment that you gave to us and pointing all of the glory back to you. Father God, we thank you for the love and guidance that you've given us, the lessons that you share with us, for your forgiveness, your grace, your everlasting love. Thank you for sending your son. And Lord, when your son ascended to go sit at your side, thank you for the Holy Spirit that came to be with us every day and to lead us where we are supposed to go and guide us on the journey along the way. Father God, we love you. We need you. In your son Jesus' holy name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.
all, I pray that today you remember that we have a job to do. Remember that we are blessed, that God has a plan for us, and it is greater than anything we could possibly imagine. So be blessed, be meek, be gentle, be loving in what you are tasked to do, and go and do it, and God has a great promise for you. Remember that no matter how far off the beaten path you may have gotten, you're not that far away from where you want to be, and God will restore you. He has that power. So again, no matter how far you feel you may have gotten from God, just turn around because he's right behind you. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.